Sick of paying high premiums every month for your high deductible health care plan? Rush visits with your doctor and long waits to get in to be seen? I feel ya, you are not alone. What if you could have direct access to your doctor, transparency about costs, and no more insurance nonsense? Let me introduce you to how medicine was practiced for centuries, until the late 1900s, really. Let's talk about direct pay medicine, specifically direct pay dermatology. I'm Dr. Mary Alice Mina, board certified dermatologist and host of the Skin Real podcast. Welcome to my channel where I give fact-based, unhyped skincare guidance and education to help you know how to really take care of your skin. Sound good? Let's get into it. Welcome to my recap episode where I break down my key takeaways from my most recent episode. This week, I was discussing direct pay dermatology with board-certified dermatologist, Dr. Stephen Llewellis. So we have all been there, rushed appointments with your doctor, feeling like just a few of your concerns were addressed with little to no time for preventative care. You leave with more questions than answers. And then, of course, you get a high copay and then maybe a bill a couple months later that you've totally even forgotten about that visit. Yes, I feel you. I hear you. Welcome to the world of third party payers, a.k.a. insurance. And as a doctor and a patient, I can tell you I see both sides of this and both sides are completely frustrated and overwhelmed with this incredibly broken healthcare system that we have. As a physician, I am so frustrated when I cannot give the patients the care that they really need. I feel like I cannot spend the time with my patients that they really need. And then I'm having to jump through hoops just to get paid for the services that I provided to my patients. And on the flip side, as a patient, I see how it is frustrating to wait in a busy, crowded waiting room for your short, very short appointment and not always getting everything addressed at that one visit, having to come back, all that nonsense, and then in confusion about what is something gonna cost? Is this gonna be covered? Is it not gonna be covered? How much is my responsibility? And of course, as someone with a very high deductible, I'm frequently essentially paying out of pocket for my medical care on top of paying expensive monthly premiums to my insurance company. In some ways, we have the best healthcare system out there, we have so much opportunity. We can do procedures that other countries do not have available. The problem is it costs money and you have to have means. And unfortunately, some people are literally put into bankruptcy over their medical bills. And then they have to decide whether they have a surgery or treatment or they feed their family or they pay their rent. And that shouldn't be the case in this first world country that we live in here, at least in the United States. So if both doctors are frustrated and patients are frustrated, and I should also just say, and not just doctors, right, the providers, the people, the frontline giving that health care, like a nurse practitioner, a nurse, physician assistant, as well as doctors, I'm kind of lumping them into this category, the people who are actually delivering the care, they are incredibly frustrated and burnt out as are the patients. And so if this system is so broken, who's winning, right? It's not the providers and it's not the patients. So who wins in this crazy game of healthcare? I'll tell you, it's the insurance companies. The insurance companies are thriving. They are for profit and they are making hundreds of millions of dollars off you. And they do this by charging you a lot of money for the privilege of having health care with them, making you have a very high deductible so that you are paying most of your costs yourself, and then denying care, right? Because if they provide too much care, they're not going to make as much money. And again, they're for profit. Also, it's important to note your insurance company did not take a Hippocratic oath to put you before profits. Your doctor did. Your physicians have an obligation to put your care before profit. So you might be saying, is this all doom and gloom and healthcare is horrible and it's never going to get better? I don't know. But there are a group of doctors who are trying to take back control. They are trying to get rid of this nonsense of insurance 
and put the physician-patient relationship first and foremost, which is how medicine had been practiced for centuries before third-party payers. Direct pay dermatology is essentially a model where a physician lists out the cost to see them for certain visits, the cost of certain procedures. It is posted on the website. It's posted in their office. It is very clearly delineated and patients are aware what the price is. And the patient makes an appointment. They see their doctor. The services are rendered. And then when they leave, they pay for those services. And that is it, period. There are no surprise bills later. There are no haggling. There is no price inflation only to be deducted later by the insurance company. It is just very transactional, just like most things that we pay for, right? You have a service, you get your haircut, you pay for the haircut, and you leave, right? Now, the doctors, the dermatologists are actually able to give you a very reasonable rate because they are no longer dealing with insurance. They no longer have the high overhead of having to hire staff members, maybe multiple staff members, a billing company, all these extra people just to fight with insurance companies to get payment. And so because of that, they can actually charge exactly what they need for the services that are rendered. And so there is complete transparency. And I love that. I love that you know how much your visit is right off the bat, how much any procedure is going to be right off the bat, and you pay for it right off the bat. Unfortunately, with an insurance-based model, the insurance company actually sets the price of what they're willing to pay, and that's going to vary based on your plan, based on the carrier. And so when patients ask me, well, how much is this procedure going to cost? I really can't tell them right off the bat. It also depends on how much of their deductible they've reached. And, and so my staff will try to give them a close approximation, but it's not always perfect. And patients don't realize that it's not because I don't want to give them that transparent price. I just don't know because that price is actually dictated by your insurance company. And unfortunately, insurance companies, while they are expecting their customers, you, the patient, to pay more and more each year, they're covering less and less, and they also are reimbursing less and less for services. And so you are going to start to see physicians' offices closing, or they will stop taking a certain insurance plan, whether that's Medicare or Aetna or Blue Cross, whatever, because it doesn't make sense financially for them to provide those services for the reimbursement rate that they are getting. And as you can imagine, if physicians start dropping out of things like Medicare or huge insurance plans, that's going to be a big problem. We're going to have a huge number of people who may have insurance, but have no one to provide that care for them. Now, you might be wondering, well, how is direct pay medicine different from concierge medicine? And concierge medicine is still an insurance-based practice, typically. But what you do is you pay sort of a membership fee to be kind of on the VIP list. And what that gives you is more direct access to your doctor, oftentimes a shorter wait to get in, perhaps a longer appointment time. So it kind of puts you at the front of the line. But these practices, they're still insurance-based. You're still using your insurance. You just pay that extra premium to kind of move ahead to the front. With direct pay, medicine. It does not require a membership fee. And so it is actually very affordable for people of all backgrounds, of all financial needs. And because the prices are typically lower than what you would pay through insurance, it is oftentimes the most economical for people to get excellent care. Now, sometimes people say, well, I have insurance, so I want to use it. So with direct pay practices, you pay your doctor directly for the services that were rendered, but your doctor could then give you a list of the codes that were used. And then you can potentially submit that to your carrier to see if they will reimburse you after the fact. I feel like people are familiar with this with dental plans, but I do think we'll see more of this as more practices shift to a direct pay model. So you may still be able to use your insurance, but that's something that you do after the fact, after you've already directly paid for the services from your dermatologist and you do that separately on your own for reimbursement. I think patients, as the insurance company calls you, customers are going to start wisening up that this isn't working for me. I'm paying all this money 
I'm not getting coverage. There has to be a better way. And for many people, it may be this direct pay model. Right now, it is certainly not the norm. Insurance-based model is. That's the one that's very prevalent. But there are people practicing in all fields, direct pay medicine, not just dermatology. It does take a little bit of research on your end. Try Googling direct pay medicine, direct pay dermatology in your area and see what pops up. You may be surprised how many practices there are. And over the next few years, I think you'll start to see more and more of these practices pop up. I think direct pay dermatology really makes sense for a number of reasons. There are so many things we do in dermatology that insurance considers cosmetic that they will not even pay for even if it's really not cosmetic. Having a laser treatment, as certain lasers have now been shown to prevent the increase in precancers and skin cancers in people, as well as chemical peels. However, insurance will not cover this. They will not pay for these procedures, even though there really is a medical benefit for them. They also don't pay for acne scars. So acne, a medical condition, they will cover that, but they will not cover the sequela of acne, which are those scars. So in dermatology, we already are walking this line of things covered by insurance and then things not covered by insurance. And patients are used to hearing that they have to pay out of pocket for something considered cosmetic, even though we really know it's not really cosmetic. Now, I am insurance-based. I do a lot of surgery, a lot of most surgery, and I have a huge Medicare population. And at this point, it doesn't make sense for me. I would hate to no longer be able to provide care for my senior patients on Medicare who need their skin cancers treated. So I do not have firsthand experience as a direct pay dermatologist myself, but I think it's a very cool area. I think dermatology is poised to do really well with this model. We're going to see a lot of dermatologists new in practice creating practices like this that just make more sense. It brings the relationship back to the doctor and the patient, cuts out that middleman that has really just bloated things, inflated things, and created a whole lot of nonsense with very little benefit, if any, to the patient. Now, I don't foresee insurance going away completely by any means. We do need insurance. We need insurance for catastrophic stuff. We need insurance for big things that we can't cover that could put us in financial ruin. Just like we have insurance for our house or insurance for our cars, we use that for the big expensive stuff. We don't use our insurance to perhaps even get the HVAC changed out, right? You save insurance for those really high expensive things. But somehow with healthcare, we want insurance to cover everything, every little thing. And because we're paying so much, we feel like it should but because people want everything covered, it's really making the cost just balloon out of control. And what I like about direct pay models is that it allows the more straightforward things to be cash-based, no insurance involvement, and then save the really expensive, the cancer therapies, the major open heart surgeries, the huge, really big things that you could not possibly cover on your own save those for insurance. This is a huge topic. It is something I think we're going to be hearing about a lot more because our healthcare system is broken and we do need solutions and we do need fixes. If you want to hear the whole recap episode with Dr. Luellis, be sure to check out my podcast episode number 91. You can click on it here to watch that video now and I will see you next week.